Hello everybody, His Holy Warrior here again. And if you can't tell, yes, I'm doing another video on Game Dev Tycoon. Um, the reason is because in the first one you saw the beginning of the game when you're just starting out and that was actually kind of boring. Um, and that, don't worry, this video will be a lot shorter. Uh, so now I'm going to show you what uh, it looks like when you have turned your company into a successful uh, game development company with uh, where you're producing uh, large games. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, Holy Games this time. The uh, one that I was, uh, the company I was using in my uh, last video was uh, failed miserably uh, we went bankrupt and this game's version of electronic arts bought out the rights to all the franchises that I created and apparently the fans were very upset about that so um, I started over again with holy games and came very close after moving to the second office space to uh, going bankrupt again so I started developing a whole bunch of really quickly made and terrible games. And f as funny as, or as bad as that may sound, it actually saved the company because I made enough money to hire more, uh, develop or more programmers and turn it into a uh, successful uh, developer so or development studio. So let's go ahead and load this up here. All right, here, this, what you're seeing here is the final stage uh, or final office space that you get. Um, as you can see, I have six uh, programmers and um, all of them, uh, or that's as many as you can have. As you can see, as you can see up there, it uh, cost me uh, $501,000 uh, just over that to for expenses to pay them and everything and my people are tired just time to send them on vacation that's something you didn't get to see in the last video when you have developer or programmers I keep calling them developers programmers uh, after you uh, work them enough they start getting tired and you have to send them on vacation so they can rest up or else they won't be as productive and for, uh, the funny thing is, is that you your character actually never requires to go on vacation so apparently he's like Superman uh, Wow uh, but as you can see I've got 542 million dollars in cash um, that's quite a bit of money <laughs> so real quick let's develop a sequel um, let's see these are all the games that I have uh, created and released uh, yes yeah, so I continued on with the Mass Effect series and Mass Effect uh, 4 sucked because it was a small game and it was very badly developed so I almost ruined the Mass Effect series but then uh, Mass Effect 5 was a medium sized game and it ended up uh, being a pretty big hit. Mass Effect 6 was a large game if I'm not mistaken and yeah it ended up let's see it cost me 1.8 million and I ended up making 63.8 million off of it. It sold how many copies? Six million copies. So yeah, it was uh, ranked number seven on the sales chart. All right, uh, time for me to shut up. I also de uh, developed Freelancer 2, which uh, Phoenix Jape liked that because me and him are both uh, huge fans of Freelancer 2. And whenever we chat, he's always saying that um, he really wishes in real life they'd release Freelancer 2 so I created it and it was actually pretty successful um, so you know what I think we're gonna make Freelancer 3 tonight alright we'll make it a large game a space simulation hmm yeah, action. Okay. <clears throat> Platform, the next Xbox. Game engine. Okay. Uh, when I first started, uh, I didn't. There's a couple game engines you see. It's just Game Engine 1 and Game, game Engine 3. I forgot to name them. So, yeah, they're just generic game engines. That was my first one. The second one I called Devastator. Uh, and then the third one, then uh, Devastator 2 was released, and then the more advanced one I called Defiance, 
And then uh, the really, really advanced one, it's not the most advanced you can get, but it's close to it, uh, Defiance 2. And it's actually really freaking huge. Graphics version 4. Alright, people, start developing. Oh, game convention. Sure, let's spend one and a half million dollars to go to game convention. All right, now this is where it gets different. Uh, once you get to where you're developing medium and uh, medium games on up, uh, you notice that uh, and uh, under each of the uh, categories that you can uh, uh, work on, to, you know that you need to work on to develop the game. Uh, there's the name of a programmer above it. Well, you also see over here. Um, their fatigue level. Uh, once you get to those larger size games, um, it actually puts a lot of uh, pressure on your team to develop it. So you assign people different categories and then you let them go and work on it. But you gotta be careful not to overwork them too much. Now look, notice how much faster you develop when you've got this many developers involved or this many programmers involved. See, so yeah, I'm already up to uh, over a hundred. And I may make 150. Close to it. Uh, and that was just off of the first stage of development. It's insane. Freelancer 3 is going to be huge. Alright. Oh, game convention. Oh, Freelancer 3 is uh, in the spotlight. I should get us some extra. Wow, we had 2,234,000 visitors. Number one booth, yeah. Been the number one booth um, four out of the last five years. We were number three a couple of years ago. Yeah, let's develop boys and girls. Oh my gosh. This may top any of my previous games development wise. Alright, um. It's somebody with awesome. There we go. Joe Smodley. Alright, stage three, go! It's insane how fast they're developing right now. It's crazy. Dang. Near 400 on design, over 500 on technology. That's going to be the most advanced game ever created. This is for you, Phoenix Jape. Making your dream freelancer game, or our dream freelancer game. Oh, design just passed 400. Alright, you guys can stop now. Alright, let's release this sucker. New record, alright. Alright. Yeah, see, my character is level 10. He's topped out, I think. I don't know if you can go past 11 or not. Uh, or, I mean, 10. And then everybody else is following suit. Let's release the sucker, see how it does. <clears throat> adventure games. Well, I'm not releasing an adventure game, so shut it. You can give it a bad rating, aren't you? You suck, Star Games. This should be a perfect 10 all around. Ugh, I hate game reviewers. I swear. Oh, watch, it's gonna release and it's gonna set, rack up a ton of money. And... First week sold 1.1 million copies. Yeah, suck on that, reviewers. Yeah, platinum status. Suck on that. Yeah, see, once you get to this point, 
yeah, whatever. Anyway, yeah, once you reach this, reach this point in the game where you're developing games like this, yeah, money just flows in like crazy. You really don't have a whole lot of worries. And, uh, oh, sent somebody on vacation here. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it, and I, I also, um, usually once you start uh, developing medium games, you know, the, the bigger type games, uh, you're expected to go through a producer. You're supposed to have a production company, you know, like, you know, like the developers, you know, nowadays, you know, some of them will, uh, develop games you know like bioware they'll develop a game but you know ea publishes it you know that that's what they're expecting me to do but i didn't do it um i actually did what i'm not supposed to what well i mean you can you're you can do it but you know you're it's easier supposedly if you go through a producer well i refuse to do that so that all the money went to me well our games are so awesome that uh, and well developed that we've been making money off of them like crazy, and they've been selling even without a publisher. So, yeah, we're, I I would say we're probably the most um, uh, uh, the most gifted uh, developers in the history of the world. Wow. Sold, sold uh, well, a little over five and a half million units. That's not too bad. I'm sure Phoenix J bought a copy of it. All right. So, well, that's all I actually wanted to show you. Um, you got to see some of the features. I've technically already beat the game because after, uh, was it 30 years? Yeah. After 30 years, um, uh, the game ends. And I don't care about the game convention. Fine, we'll go to a large booth. Anyway, yeah, after 30 years, um, the game ends, and you get to, you get a final score and everything. Well, up up at that point, I hadn't developed any games larger than a small game. So, what am I doing here? It's supposed to be sent. Oh, he's already on vacation. But so I I didn't get any points for developing larger games. So yeah, that actually hurt my score, but. You know, because I'd done so well, I actually ended up, you know, with a fairly decent score, so. But, yeah. <clears throat> Alright, yeah. Freelancer 3 again. Well, this year may suck. Featuring the exact same game. Nope. Around the same amount. Yep. For number one. But yeah, uh, so but even after you technically beat the game, you get to keep playing. It's open ended. You just get to keep developing games if you want to. It's just no new consoles get released. Uh, the random story events you get during the normal game, uh, you know, don't happen. So it's just basically you keep developing games and throwing them out there, and that's actually about it. Which is fun for a while, but, you know, eventually it gets kind of boring because you're just doing the same thing and you realize there's no point to it because, you know, especially once you max everything out. But anyway, uh, that's all I actually wanted to show you. Um, I wanted to show you what it looked like once you get uh, once you get to a higher level and get close to in-game stuff. So uh, thanks for joining me on this episode of Game Time.